Psalms 84. To the chief musician upon Gilead, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Korah was the, one of the sons of the Levites set up for service to the tabernacle. And this hymn, this song, song, all the same, is about the temple. How amiable, lovely, are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. That sets forth the tone of this whole song. And we don't know who wrote, who wrote this song, or psalm. Some have said David, but, you know, before it, David's gotten the credit. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. So there's a desire to be where God is. And in the Old Testament, God is in the, temp in the temple. There's a misfunction today, you know, God's in the church house. No, he's not. Not especially during the glad to see in church age when he's standing outside the door knocking. He's in the body of believers. We are not wood, brick, stones, and windows and glass. He dwells in our heart. The Holy Spirit does. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together. Do you realize if you're home and you got a husband that's saved and a wife that's saved and you got a child that's saved, you're in the assembly of the church. You're out by yourself. You're driving somewhere in your car and you're saved. You got the church. But in the Old Testament, they didn't have that indwelling spirit. That God dwelt in that tabernacle. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. And that's kind of interesting because Paul says that the flesh and the spirit are enmity against you. They hate each other. The person who wrote this song has said that even his flesh wants to go see God. And have you tried that Sunday morning? Your flesh is just so happy to get up early in the morning and go to church. You've been working all, all day long and it's your midweek service and oh, your body just wants to go to church. You're tired. Yeah, and there's sometimes, hey, listen, we're, we're human. There's sometimes, you know, we don't want to go to church. We're sore, we're tired, we're upset. And he has wrote, my flesh wants to go. And cries out for the living God, not the dead God, the living God. The God of the psalmist, my, my God is not laying in state somewhere in a tomb, a glass bowl, or, no, my God's alive. Yea, the sparrow has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thy altar, O Lord of hosts. And I know envy is bad, but the psalmist is saying the altars, that's the incense altar, and that's the brazen altar. And evidently, when he when he's gone to the tabernacle, he has seen where birds have dwelt in the tabernacle or around the tabernacle. He's like, oh, I wish I could be like that bird. They're living here. I can't live here. And it doesn't say he's of Korah the Levite. It said it's for. And only the Levites were able, or the elite, could live around that tabernacle. He's saying, oh, look at that bird up there. That bird is dwelling and watching and seeing the work of God every day. And some of the offerings were pigeons and turtle dove. And I, I forget which one is the swallow or the sparrow. Jesus said, God, you know, 
attends the funeral. God knows the sparrows. And here are birds that are in the community of the tabernacle. And the psalm is like, oh, I wish I'd just be like them. Look, look, look at the chicks. Look at those baby eggs. Look at the chicks. Look at those young birds. They're growing up in the presence of God. I wish I could do it. I wish I could raise my family like that. And that altar is, again, it's plural. That's not, that's the incense altar and the brazen altar. Now, is there a bird in the holy place? He wouldn't see it. That holy place was only for the, the, the priests. The most holy place for the most high priest. He's talking about the building. It's just the whole general building. Here they are. Solomon writes to us that a little spider is in the little corner of the king's throne room. Where many don't go. You know, there have been mice, ants, cockroaches. There's been all kinds of insect in, in the animal world. Places that men will never be or have gone. Here the psalmist writes, here are two types of birds. He says, O Lord of hosts, my capital K, King, and my God. Well, guess who that is? And let's move this passage not only present as the writer's written, but let's look at it in the future, in the millennium, King Jesus over the Jews. And when the curse is removed off the land, the millennium, just think about it, there'll be birds there. And they'll have their young. There will be the king there, Jesus, the, the prince, David, and the Levites. The temple is there, the temple's there. And they're going to be one of the people who are going to want, I want to stay here and live with Jesus. Blessed, happy are they that dwell in thy house. There's nobody that dwells in the house. Samuel. The Bible says he would get up in the morning and open up the house. And the dwelling is not particularly living, but for the priest written to the sons of Korah, this is your job, this is your mainstay. They be still praising thee. Selah. Now where is the second advent? The capital K and King. The service of those Levites that dwell and live and have their occupation. The singers that David said, you're going to be, your job is going to deal with the praise and honor of God here at the temple. The doorkeepers, your job is to make sure, you know, it's orderly. That someone who does not need to be here is not here. And they come in to do what they're supposed to do. Dwelling. You don't live there, but man, it's your second home. Blessed, happy. Is the man whose strength is in name, not weights, not vitamins, not exercise, not guns, not armies, not horses, that puts his strength, his trust in God. God, you're going to do it. That's faith. And sometimes, like the other Psalms and Psalms, we'll, we'll continue to study, Lord willing, and in our own life, I am suffering now with it. We look at it as like, is God really listening? God really going to help? Not that I've given up on God. It's not that some has given up. It's just, you know, we're not God. We don't know what God is doing. And that's called faith. Faith is a strength to believe in something you have not seen. What is the strength of the Christian of all the things that a Christian goes through? Jesus is coming. Well, what if I die? 
He's still coming. My grandma always kept on saying, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming, the Lord's coming. And she's, she died before he came. That's not going to stop him from, oh, I can't come because his grandmother. No. And when he comes, he'll take her out of the grave. That's faith and that's strength. What keeps us Christians going? Here, well done. Now, I'm not going to give up on the Lord. I'm not going to quit on the Lord. Right now, I, I, I want a wife. I want God to help me, but I'm not going to quit. I'm down in the dumps like Job, and one day I'll get my chapter 42. But I'm not giving up. You can lift weights and do all that, and you're still going to die. You can be a Christian bodybuilder and, and give up and quit because you don't have the strength of God. In whose heart are the ways of them. With the heart man believes on the righteous. Not the muscles. Not the head. It's your heart. It's your belief. It's your faith. That God said it and it will happen. Are we not to count our many blessings? Are we not to look at, have we not seen the word remember? Remember what God's done for us. Why? Because we're going to come up to more events in our life. It's going to be, God took care of me. God's helped me. Who passing through the valley of Becca. Now some say there's not a valley. Some say the Psalms is writing about, you know, valley, woe is me, troubles and problems. We don't really need to worry about it because it's only one place in the Bible and there it is. As many have concluded to say weeping, crying. Who passed through the valley of Becca. Trials and tribulations, maybe. Make it a well. And it's called a dry place. It's a dry place. So make a well. In a dry place. The rain also filled the pools. Well, that takes faith. God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig a hole in the ground. I, I'm going to hope you're going to make it rain. Is that not the same faith that Sarah had? That uh, I forget which the New Testament writers has said that Sarah's womb was dead. Not that she couldn't have a child. Not that she was too old for a child. It said that her womb was dead. And let's just get clean and to the fact is Sarah was not having or passing any eggs at all. Her body comes to the point that whatever the woman does for eggs, Sarah was done. Her womb was dead. God says you're going to have a baby. She laughed. And God gave her the baby. Here's a place of dryness, a valley that's not a valley, troubles and problems. Lord, you know what? I'm going to dig some holes or dig a hole and you're going to make it rain filled with water. That's faith. God, I've got turmoil, I've got problems, I've got troubles. We're living a month's coronavirus, but you said you're coming. You said you'll never leave me or forsake me. You say you take care of me. They go from strength to strength. And when God gets you through one obstacle, it'll get you through the next obstacle, and it'll get you through the next obstacle until you get to be with God. And there's a passage that I believe is either Paul or Peter, you know, with, with faith, you know, patience comes this, and with this comes that, and it's a building. It's God working on us for the holiness likened to Jesus Christ. That even Jesus Christ needed to learn through the obedience of his parents. And when we pass with well, one strength in our in our life and God gives us the victory, it's to be for the next trouble we have and to come over that. 
Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. That's Jerusalem. That's the temple. And it also took physical strength to get to Jerusalem because Jerusalem's on a mountain. Don't think I can do it. Don't think I can do it. Well, here, get on the pony. Get on the, the ass. Get on the cow. Do it. Go for it. Well, I don't know how we're going to do it. Uh, you know, it's time... For it's time for us to go to Jerusalem. We're supposed to, you know, we just don't have enough money. We, we, oh, the journey's hard. and Do it. I don't know how I'm going to get through this, this part of my life. Do it. Trust in God and go for it. Oh, Lord God of hosts. Hear my prayer. There you go. That's what you need. You need prayer. James says, you ask, you receive not because you ask not. Jesus said, ask, seek, and not. And when he says, oh, hear my prayer, give ear. I wrote yesterday, I, you know, I don't think God's listening. And somebody wrote, you know, back, well, well he's listening. Evidently, you haven't studied the Psalms and you haven't come through a life to know what I was saying. Because I am at a point in my life right now, yeah, I'm praying, I'm confessing every sin. I'm, uh, and God, been over 100 days, my ear still infected. God's been over 100 days, and I'm still lonely. God, when are you going to answer? God, when are you going to do it? And it's not we giving up faith on God. We just giving up on patience. If you got more patience than the next person, well, you better thank God for that. But somewhere in time, I don't think there's one person ever to be lived. Oh, I can just completely wait for it without any. You mean you don't gripe and complain? You've never griped and complained about God. Being long-suffering and patient. That there are times, from what I read in the Bible, and from what I know, God, I'm praying to you, where are you? Oh, he's in the throne. Well, that's good to know. But right now, I don't feel him working. Well, he's listening. Yeah, okay, I know that. I know the scripture. And we've seen David distraught. We've seen David, God, where are you? Why are you taking so long, God? David's a mighty man of our, David's a mighty man in the Lord. But, you know, he he never lost patience with God. No, you haven't studied the Psalms. The Bible says, the study to show thyself approved unto God. O God of Jacob, Israel, Selah. Second Advent. Behold our God's a shield. Let's look at David for a moment. What did he have when he fought Goliath? He had his slingshot and he had five stones and he had no shield. Goliath had, a, had somebody carry his shield. So he would be free to have his sword, which he never pulled out of the sheath. What protected David from Goliath? God. God is the shield. And I believe when Paul writes to us about the Christian armor, I didn't check this, I should have. I think shield is the shield of faith. You to what? Faith. What have we been talking about? Faith. David did not need a shield. Because he had a shield. And he had the rock of Christ. I said that David went to the brook and gathered those stones out of the brook. Well, from the rock that followed Israel in the wilderness, it brought forth water. Jesus says, and Paul says that the rock is Jesus, and Jesus says, I'm the water of life. And David said, I'm going to take you down with Jesus. 
from the rock that followed Israel, and from the living waters, I'm going to take you down, Goliath. And I don't need a shield. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. Ooh, that's loaded. You see that, Selah? So where's the second advent at reference? The anointed. What's that mean? Anointed means to be anointed with oil, to be called to service. Jesus, Jehovah saved. What does Christ mean? I don't know. Christ means anointed. Jesus Christ, Jehovah saved the anointed one. There's Jesus again. Look on the face of thy anointed. That's Jesus Christ. In Zion, as the capital K, we're looking into the millennium. The writers writing about here, sons of Korah, have this as to be sung at the temple. And this song will be open up heaven, earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. All right, open your Psalms to 84. Because the chapter and verses will be there. They weren't there in the time of uh, this is written. I don't know if they had a Psalm 84. Probably just had to the chief musician, but I'm getting you a Psalm for the song of the court. Man, that's all they had. But they didn't have verse 1, 2, and 3, and 4. That came later. And with Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the King of Israel, on the throne of David. All right, let's sing before Jesus, Psalm 84. And there'll be sparrows, and there'll be swallows, and doves, and all around. Without the curse. You better do what Daniel did. Call up a couple of lions, lay up against them, get all comfortable. Hey, kitty, come on. I'm a little sore today. Turn on your... Turn on your purring. Oh, that feels good. Uh -huh. All right, son, will you bring them tigers in that over? Come on, stop playing with the tigers and get over here. Let's listen to Jesus. That's scripture. That's before Jesus. For a day in thy courts, the temple, is better than a thousand. And Peter says, one day in the Lord. And interesting. And interesting. And you know, it's funny that this doesn't even have the reference to Peter saying, one day is the Lord. But there it is. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. And that's the only time that word shows up in the Bible. In the house of my God. And you have all these, these witches and dragons and and all these kind of sorcery games and they have a doorkeeper into the next portal that comes out of the bible here's a man's job is all right wait a minute one at a time he's bringing his offering in wait, wait till he gets his offering in let's do this in orderly fashion uh, wait a minute you don't belong here you, you need to go And doorkeeping, I don't know how low that job was, if there was ever a job to be low in the in the tabernacle, but this I'd rather be the doorkeeper. Then what? Then I'd rather be the keeper of the house of my God, my God, since God, than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I don't want no fellowship with the wickedness, and Christians today have fellowship with the wickedness. And I don't want to be an usher. That's too low down in my church. I want to be somebody important in the church. For the Lord God is a son. Oh, you'll see the second advent in that passage. And then New Jerusalem, Jesus Christ is called the light of the sun. Has no need of the light of the moon. And shield again. There is light and light. And the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. So if you do right, you're going to get something. 
either testament. O Lord of hosts, bless, happy, is a man that trusteth in thee. And that's true any age, any period. 